Hi, everyone, and welcome back. And for this session now, we're going to start off with Susie Shrub, uh, who is from Fermilab. Hi, Susie. How are you? And she'll be Hello. talking about composing with Fermilab neutrinos and liquid argon time projection chambers. Thank you so much, Susie. Thank you. I'm just going to share my screen and optimize. I've got some musical clips and video to play, so I'm just going to click on the old things that I need. Okay, hi everyone. Um, I was just really enjoying that um, previous track and really reflecting on how there's something, dare I say it, it's a science conference magical about the fact that the structures, that the language we use to define geometry and geometrical structures, we can rap about it in um, spoken language. And there's, there was something really amazing about that for me. Anyway, thank you. So today I'm going to talk about my virtual collaborations and composing with Fermilab and its particelophones and um, the pieces that are emerging. So one is called Time Projection Chamber, the other is six and six easy and not so easy event displays and elementary sounds. So I'm going to give you a, a sketch of these collaborations with individual physicists, performers, um, and as composer in residence at Fermilab, um, because that's my current position, but I also work with individual um, particle physicists. And I'm going to sketch out a little bit about the pieces and projects that are emerging from from this. And, and I'm going to play some sketches of the music. And also um, some bits that we're going to be preparing for final performances that are actually happening next year. And I'm hoping to play a video of a collaboration with a physicist so that you can actually see what it is we do and how it works. Um, because I'm very keen to share that process. So I think it's really incredible. There's a lot that I'm not going to be able to get to in a 20 minute talk. Um, and although I'll be speaking about particle physics and detection technology and accelerator technology, I just want to preface this by saying I'm not a scientist at all. I'm a musician. So any errors that I make in this talk, I apologize to the physicists I work with and they're my own errors. So I'm going to mention some of the physicists, individual physicists I work with, and I mentioned elementary sounds. That's a, a piece or a series of works that I'm making with the physicist uh, Matthias Carnero. And then Eleanor Gramellini, Michael Kirby, George Redlinger, Angela Fava, Fermilab as well, like the institution, the organization. I feel like I'm also making pieces with Fermilab. And I want to make a special mention to Mick Levadiotis, who's a pianist I'm working with at the moment to construct the time projection chamber and the not so easy event displays pieces. Um, and you're going to hear some of her playing tonight or this afternoon for some of you, or maybe in the morning for some of you others. And I also want to mention that all of this work takes place online. So all of our collaborations are, are online collaborations. And I feel like that speaks a lot to the world of particle physics because these are international collaborations um, and it's not possible for people to, to meet together all the time face to face. And so a lot of meetings and a lot of work is done online. So it, it feels really important and fitting to me that that's the way we're also making these pieces is through these online collaborations. And even the first rehearsal that myself and Mick had with Michael Kirby a, a few weeks ago to put the time projection chamber pieces together. We were, me and Mick were both in the same room, but Kirby was, um, he was meeting us online. And so I think there's this, this just, it's very interesting that the, the way that particle physics is, is made or, or these experiments are made is also sort of coming into my composition practice and music, musical practice as part of my residency at Fermilab. I think that's, that's a sort of quite interesting thing to me. Um, and all of this work begins with this series of research questions that I myself have. So this is how this all came out was just because I'm very curious about these questions. Um, and, and then there is a dialogue and a conversation with physicists and with Fermilab that enables these pieces to emerge. So they come from this place of relationship, which is a bit like the particle interactions, you know, the particles interact, they, they come together in relationship and then the system changes and something else emerges. 
And I feel like there's something of that in this composition practice where you're bringing these two worlds together, which are mediated by the relationship interactions through like a musician and a, and a physicist and a piece will emerge. Um, and there's, there's something that speaks to me about the particle interactions about that. So underpinning this research question is the starting place. So this idea that particle physics systems are also inherently musical um, because they're each a dynamic interplay between duration, vibration, there, there's some kind of organizing structural system or principle. And then there's a context which enables these things to, to interplay and interrelate. And there's that, that might be a social context. And I think for both um, practices or, or, or um, realms, it's definitely there's a social and cultural context as well within which they emerge or from which they emerge. And so another another part of this is if musical structures can express particle physics structures, then what is this music? And another interesting idea is that the detector and accelerator technology then become this kind of musical instrument, which I call the particelophone. You'll see that written in a big word there on the screen. So in our collaborations, we're exploring and creating the music that these instruments are playing and this music of the atoms, this idea of them. We have the music of the spheres, which is a sort of ancient classical idea that takes us back to Pythagoras. Um, and then it's sort of the contemporary, I guess, idea of that is these, this music of the atoms. So this is Fermilab. I just want to show you a picture of this, this place because I'm a composer in residence there, but I've never ever been there. So uh, this picture means a lot to me because it's the thing I've been really relating to, to see where I'm resident because I'm kind of resident in my living room right now at Fermilab. And you can see there's a there's a large ring in the foreground. That's that's one of the main ring particle accelerators. And then the, the large ring in the background you can see is called the Tevatron, which is which, which was the largest particle accelerator in the world, I think, at a certain point until the LHC was built. Um, and, the, and all sorts of dis amazing discoveries were, were made there. I think the top quark was discovered there. And you can see a building in the background there, that's the Wilson Hall. And then you can actually see going off into the distance some of the experiments, that, or, or you can't see the, the direct buildings, but you can see um, off to the top left of the screen, that's, that's sort of where the experiments I've been working with are, are based. Um, and it's a physics, it's a particle physics laboratory, but it's also a detector and accelerator laboratory. So it builds the technology that we use to, to probe the very small level of, of reality um, that we're talking about here. So I also wanted to show you this Fermilab. This is the accelerator complex, because this is the, the first piece I'm going to talk about, which I'm making with Mateus. I guess we are making this piece. It's very much a collaboration, and he's a, much a composer, I would say, as as I am. Um, and what we're doing is we are we see it as you, you can see where the beam is starting. There's an ion source. There's the booster beam, and then you'll see um, you know you can see there's the main injector recycler ring, and then there's there's all sorts of different things coming off. So we, we make a neutrino beam using this, and we also make muon beams for the muon experiment. The G minus two is a really famous one that you might have heard of that, that's here. And the experiments we are working with um, in the other pieces are the low energy neutrino experiments you can see there. So this is, this is we are focusing on the bit that we use to make a neutrino beam. And we're making a piece of music from this, so I'm just going to carry on because there's all these different components to how we make a neutrino beam, and each each different section you can see there's there's the protons that are coming in, then there's a target with it, with these horns. I mean, there's, there's there's this beautiful thing. There's even musical language in particle physics. So there's horns in um, the G minus two experiment. There are harps in there. I just think it's this is just lovely um, things all the time that relate to one another. We've got the decay pipe, then we've got the, this absorber and these muon monitors. And at each different point, we've got different material, particle material, 
and different ways in which those particles are behaving in these different locations along this process. And these are inherently musical to me. So last year I spoke about the way we're, we're, we're starting to think about working with the proton. That That is an unbelievably complex um, uh, entity, a proton, and musically incredibly difficult. Like, there's no way we could do it in 20 minutes to talk about how we, we might do that. But then the proton system that hits this target and then the particles that come out of that, we suddenly have a completely different kind of particle, um, which is focused by these horns. So the target, we have this chaos. So musically, we're going to have chaos there. And then the horns are focusing this chaos. So we musically are going to have something really chaotic that then becomes much more ordered, much calmer. And then in the decay pipe, we have another system which is undergoing change. So we have the start of the system, which is this highly ordered um, thing that has been focused by the horns. And then it literally, we just leave it to decay into muons and neutrinos, actually. And then, of course, we suck, we, we basically absorb the muons. So there's this beautiful musical change that happens in the decay pipe, and it happens quite randomly. Um, well, it's, it actually doesn't happen randomly. There's my first mistake. Um, but what I mean by that is, is there's a statistical likelihood of it happening within a given time frame. And so we have to score it very precisely, but we also have to add in a component of um, statistical chance as to whether our musicians are going to act within that given time frame or not. Um, so there's this component of composing with physics, which I think is really interesting with particle physics at any rate, which is where it's, we have to really create very, very strict rules, but there's also a statistical component, which means we have to improvise around those rules. So we're, we're, we, we set up a very, very fixed set of rules, and then we allow something to emerge from from those rules and then you know when the later on you'll see the muon monitors they're checking to see if the muons have been absorbed in the rock so musically that's beautiful to me because we'll have this soundscape that will change where the muons will suddenly fade out and disappear um, and then we're left with the neutrino flux and i've got a bit of the neutrino flux to play with so all of this is to make our neutrino beam i'm just going to play um this is an electronic version in the final piece it will be played by live instruments but this is an electronic version of the neutrino flux which i really hope you can hear and this takes us into the next section so that neutrino flux, we then fire, or we, we aim it at a series of detectors. Um, and these are the time projection chambers that I mentioned before. And, and this brings me to the next piece, which is called time projection chamber. So what I'm showing you here is an image of a liquid argon time projection chamber without any liquid argon in it. So one of the things I've been working with very closely is the microboon experiment at Fermilab. And I've been working closely with physicists who work on that. Notably, Michael Kirby, I've been working very closely with, and Eleanor Gramellini as well, with whom I actually made a wonderful film called The Silent Thread, which is on YouTube, I'm all about neutrinos. Please go and check that out. So this is about a 170 ton chamber, and we fill it with liquid argon, and then we put the neutrino beam, we, we aim it into it. Um, it's located on the booster beam line at, at Fermilab, and we use it to take a, a variety of measurements. Um, and so you can see, I hope, on the screen, sort of towards the right, you can see where the light is hitting. There are thousands of little tiny wires on one side of this detector. And when I saw that first, it immediately made me think of a piano, and I've got a slide somewhere. Um, here we go. So you can see on the right of the screen, these are the wires inside the liquid argon time projection chamber. And when I saw that, I immediately thought of piano wires, which you can see to the right of the screen there. Um, and I started to think about how the the chamber is working. So an incoming neutrino comes in, hits 
um, an atomic nucleus and then it interacts. And I should also say that neutrinos interact with matter very, very rarely. So it's, it's very rare that they will do this, which is why we need a huge chamber of atoms, because it's so unlikely that they'll hit anything that we need billions and billions of atoms just so that they might hit one. Um, and so one neutrino will hit an atom and then there'll be an interaction and charged particles will emerge. And these charged particles will drift over to the wires because the whole um, the whole chamber is, um, is charged itself with an electrical field. So these charged particles drift towards the wires and then they hit the wires. And this just to me was like, the it's a musical instrument. And even Eleanor said something absolutely stunning to me the other day about, about these as musical instruments, because she says, when you're counting time, you're counting space. And that just, re that reminded me of, of the, the musicality of these detector, um, these detection technologies, because that's a very musical thing too. When, when we're measuring time, the music is, is happening in a, it's a vibrational space. Um, and I'm really short on time, I can see that, but I'm going to whiz through. So the peacetime projection chamber turns a system of musical instruments that use strings. And I favor the piano because I am a pianist. Um, and we, we basically become the system of the detector. So just like the particles are hitting the strings, the hammer on the piano is, is hitting the strings. I called this the strings wires just now because they're so interchangeable in my mind. So this piece of music, the performers and the pianos become the detector, but also become the particles. And what becomes our score, a bit like um, Mick said this to me when I was talking to her about the piece, she said in, in music, if we were playing a piece of Mozart, so we're both classical musicians, that's our background, we would learn the material of Mozart and we would, you know, we'd have to sit down and learn the notes and, and what all the notes mean and the trills and all of the dynamics and all of that kind of thing. And here, the musical material is the way that the particles are interacting in the detector. So the data that we gather in the detector of, of these different charged particles hitting the wires gets processed into this kind of image that you see. And I'm, you maybe have seen these images. They're really, really stunning. Um, I think they're very beautiful images, but what they're showing us is the ways in which the particles have interacted in the, in the detector. Um, and, and this also becomes a, a, a kind of score for a, another piece that the easy, event displays piece. We actually then use this as a score. Um, but in this peacetime projection chamber, we we take the different ways that the particles are interacting. And you can see here, there's lots of different shapes. There's one very, very long particle that is going off down to the right there. And then you'll see a, another much, much shorter trail. Um, and you'll see something that looks quite messy at the top, um, go, going off to the top right hand corner. And um, we, we can then start thinking about what, well, what's the music of this? So what's the music of that very long line is that that very long line, um, is a muon. And the way that the muon interacts with the detector is it's giving us a very steady, even deposition of energy. So it's like a very, very rhythmic, um, pulse. It's very even rhythmic pulse. And we can start to think, well, how would we play that? And so we, we basically, in, in, this is a very interpretative piece, if that's the right word, interpretive piece. We interpret the way the particles are interacting with the detector. And then the system of the performing the pianos becomes, we become the particles interacting with the detector, but we're playing it on the piano. So what I've got here is a couple of, of, of tracks of us just experimenting with this idea. And these are work, these are very, very initial works in progress. But what excites me so much is that when I've played these to physicists, they've been able to hear the particle interactions with them. So the first one, and I haven't named them after particles because I don't want to, uh, I don't want to put that idea in these recordings. Um, I want us to be able to, to construct that as well, a bit like, um, I think Matthias was saying the other day that it's a bit like we look at the data and we're interpreting it 
in you know we're taking the measurements and processing it and saying oh we think this happened and we're doing that a bit as audience um so i'll play constant and flutter And hi, yeah, I, I think I better come to an end there. I can see that the time is up. So I'll just finish it there. Thanks.